How do you do everybody? My name is Jasmine and this is my presentation for my art project. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about John Michel, who is the artist that has inspired me. Um, then we're going to talk about my art project and the process that that took. Then we're going to discuss and compare my project to the picture that I used as my inspiration. And then we're just going to close out and stuff. Alright, so here we go. A little bit about John Michel. Um, I don't want to read everything that's up here, so I'll just give you a little bit. He was born December 22nd. At an early age, his father says that he showed an interest in art, so early, like, three to four years of age, basically. Um, his mother was very, very invested in John Michel and making sure that he had... Uh, he had went to different museums and had different uh, supplies that he needed for becoming an artist. The artist himself credits his mother for being his inspiration and the one who actually fostered the growth of his inner artist. At age seven, many people don't know, and John Michel shared this in an in a interview about him um, that he got hit by a car and suffered a broken arm and he had to get his spleen removed. He has a scar. I do not have an image of him burying his chest so you can see the scar, but if you do your searches, you'll be able to find that. Um, it was at this time where his mother gave him a Grey's Anatomy book and that book inspired John michelle even more down the road. Um, there was a band that he formed named Grey based off of this exact book that he forms um, later on in life with a group of his friends. In 1976, he ran away and he proclaimed to his father that he was going to be famous one day. Little did his father or John Michel know, John Michel was right. So here's my inspiration image, uh, Dos Cabezas. It's a picture of John Michel and Andy Warhol, who is an inspiration to him. Um, the cool part about this picture is that it was, the painting was done two hours after a photo was taken of John Michelle and Andy Warhol. There are no images of the photo, but this painting is our image that, or our proof that the photo was taken. Because John Michelle is known to look at other, other uh, pieces of art or pictures or TV or books and take inspiration from that and make it into a work of art, which is why I chose this picture because of that process. Um, I chose this picture because of the fact that John Michel looked at a photo, saw that as inspiration and made this art piece. I tended to do, I tend to do that when I was younger and actually trying to be heavily invested in the art world, I would look at other photos, pictures, TV shows, took inspiration from that and tried to draw my own rendition of it. Won't say mine made me as famous as Jean Michel did, but if I was born in the right time, then I would probably be as famous as him. Here's the process of me collecting all my materials. I um, went to Joanne's Fabrics, got some paint, some basic brushes, and I got a 16 by 24 piece of canvas. So here is where the planning began. Um, I started with a little sketch before I went into Joanne Fabrics because I wanted to know what I was actually looking for. Um, the reason why I sketched the picture the day that I was going to get my materials is because John Michel is very spontaneous in his artwork. Um, although he does take inspiration from other people and other works of art, he doesn't actually sketch out what he's going to draw. He kind of starts with a line and goes from there. And um, there are actual videos of him painting and spray painting um, in different movies like Downtown 81. And in his uh, interview documentary, The Radiant Child, they also have recordings of him painting and stuff so I can attest for a fact that he didn't actually sketch any of his work before he actually put it down on paper so um, 
some similarities in the sketch that I have and my rough beginning stages over here is that this car, which isn't the car that hit him, but it's representing the car that hit him, is here. His instruments are located here and here. Andy Warhol kind of keeps his place. Gray over here will be in this section. And then the Cloud Surfer, which is written, will be right here. So, like I said, Cloud Surfer, Gray, the car that hit him, his instruments, his removed spleen, I had to kind of put that in myself um, after I painted the car, uh, and Andy Warhol. Drum roll! Boom, bam, shabam. All right. So here is the completed project, um, completed as shown here by my little signature. Uh, basically, here's my cloud surfer, the gray, like I said. If you recall in the last picture that I showed right here, it said suicide hotline. It no longer says suicide hotline because Jean Michel was known for writing things down in his pictures. And painting over it. Now he didn't completely paint over it, or sometimes he actually painted over it where you didn't know that there was even words there. But um, the reason why I did it's because I just didn't want suicide hotlines to be written right there anymore, and just kind of decided to black it out. Just, whoop, it's gone now. Um, the reason why John Michelle does it, he states in his in his interview, is that um, it makes people wonder and guess what is written and it causes the viewer to become more intrigued in the picture. So if I didn't say anything about this, you guys probably wouldn't even notice, but I decided to point it out anyway. Um, this little guy right here came from this picture right here. And the reason why I incorporated some of John Michelle's actual, like, various art pieces, um, or pieces to bigger artworks, is because I wanted to make the artist a part of his own art. Now, it would have been better if I was John Michelle himself trying to draw this picture of me and incorporating my various art into it. I said all that to say that I was trying to make a self-portrait of the artist being his own art. If that did not make sense, I would advise re like rewinding just so you can catch what I said again. I was trying to make the artist his art himself. Cool. Alright, so, um, let's compare the two. Boom, bam, shabam. Alright, um, I wanted the art to more or less respect John Michelle and pay honor to John Michelle. Although Andy Warhol is very, very important in the art world, Andy Warhol is not important in Jasmine's world. John Michelle is. So, did this painting in order to kind of show my respects to one of the great influential artists of my life. Um, actually, in an art show that Andy and John Michelle did together, uh, people called, well, after the art show tanked, people called John Michelle Andy's puppet. So, I wanted to kind of pay homage to the fact that not that Aunt. Not saying that Andy was John Michelle's puppet, but saying that John Michelle actually has a higher value to me personally, maybe to some other people, I'm not sure who, but definitely to me, that John Michelle has a higher value um, than Andy Warhol does. And I personally feel like the reason why the uh, art show between John Michelle and Andy Warhol tanked was because Warhol wasn't in his prime anymore. And John Michelle was in his prime, and people just didn't know how to separate the two. And they thought that it was Andy's way of trying to take over this new and upcoming artist. And also could have been just because John Michelle was black and people didn't know what Andy had going on in his life. It could have been multiple things, but I digress. Um, some challenges faced, there were none because I really do like art and I really like to plan my stuff out and because John Michelle is so fluid and flexible and his 
art himself, I wasn't worried about anything going wrong because I knew at the end of the day, I could just cover it and call it art and it would still pay respect to John michelle because that's what he did. Not saying that his art is just mostly covered, you know, poop, but a lot of his artwork does have a lot of sections that have been covered over with paint and there could be something underneath it. It could just be paint. We will never know because he died at 27. Um, some changes that I would have made. I don't think I would have made any changes. I would have probably changed my inspiration picture. Still did this basic, had him in the middle, but I would have probably had the background be um, a rendition of one of his pictures. Um, my appreciation for this process, I guess it kind of grew. I realized that I... I did like art, I did like painting, I did like drawing. That's basically what this project just revealed to me, that I needed to change my major because trying to be a doctor, as much money as I can get from that, is not where my passions are. And I realized that I am kind of passionate about the art world and being creative and making stuff with my hands. So that would be where my appreciation for the process came from um, and the impact that it had on my life would also follow suit with everything I just said. I guess the biggest impact in my life that this art project has made was introducing me to, although John michelle does not want to be recognized as, an Af as only an African American artist, this project has introduced me to an African American artist who many people do not know to this day, 2015. Many people do not know that John Michelle Basquiat is African American, and it could just be many people a part of my generation, but, I mean, the more publicity that we can get out about this man, I feel like the more famous he will become, because gradually, throughout, while I was, throughout the process while I was doing this project, I started to see, I guess signs would be some a weird way to call it but I would see signs of people actually knowing who he was like there would be a John Michelle shirt a guy wearing a John Michelle shirt walked by one day a girl who had a um, John Michelle shirt with his crown on it walked by on tumblr they're starting to like reblog a picture of him or his art at least twice a week now I would feel like maybe his growing publicity at least in the small section of my life is due to me and I guess I would call it a sign because maybe he's pleased with my picture but I digress in closing um, at 27 years old John Michelle passed away of an air of a heroin overdose hindsight well not hindsight but I guess backstory to this is that him and Andy Warhol actually got into a little bit of a fight before Andy Warhol passed away and Andy Warhol passed away before John Michelle and Andy were able to close those wounds that they caused in their friendship. Um, when John michel died, he left over a thousand paintings. Throughout John michels life, he was friends with and could have possibly dated Madonna. Um, at December 22nd of this year, John michel would have been 55, and he painted like and got his inspiration from young children. Now, when I say he painted like young children, he would hold onto the brush all the way at the end, kind of like with a fist, and he would just like use his wrist to direct where he wanted everything to go. So imagine your four-year-old baby cousin trying to paint a masterpiece. That was John michel Not saying he was a four-year-old, but you know. Here is my references page. Um, I made a lot of comments about a interview documentary that was um, based on John Michelle's life or done while John Michelle was alive. The link wouldn't stay and it just went into a YouTube video, but this is the video that I'm talking about called The Radiant Child. It was directed by a friend of his. You can find it on YouTube. I apologize, I don't have the link for you. And Downtown 81 was also a movie that had John Michel in Living and Breathing Color. And this is his website where I got the majority of my information from.
I hope you all enjoyed, and yeah.